Hi, this is Melinda with Melinda Howard Art. Today I'm going to show you how I make these quick, easy bookmarks using scrap pieces of watercolor paper and a little bit of watercolor and a pen. They're really fun, so thank you for watching and enjoy. Today I'm going to show you how I made these quick, easy, simple bookmarks using scrap watercolor paper. This is Arches watercolor paper that I had left over when I was making cards. If you would like to see the video that I did on doing these same bookmarks but using alcohol ink, I'll link it at the end or you can click on the pop-up there that's coming up. And then I use this pen. You can use a Secura Micron to do this, but I choose to use this Uniball Signo. It's a micro number 207. The reason that I like using this instead of my um, nice Sakura pens is because this cold press watercolor paper is a little hard on the tips of those uh, Sakura Microns. These are waterproof, they are really dark black, and I, I use this pen for all of these. I've used this kind of pen for a couple of years now and I really, really like it. And then I also put a little white um, on some of these flowers just to, to brighten them up a little bit. And I either use a Uniball Signo, which is um, a broad tip, or this uh, finer tip jelly roll white pen. I have a, a large watercolor brush. I don't want to use a small one because I want to get these big blobs of color with a, a larger brush. And then I will also use a hole punch, just a standard hole punch. And these reinforcement labels, you can't really see them because they're clear. And then I just have a variety of different kinds of of ribbons. I really like these uh, corded ribbon. I think these are very spring looking um, and I got a set of them at Michael's. You can also use just plain cotton thread if you want to or you can use uh, like really thin ribbon. This is an eighth of an inch ribbon. These are some watercolor scraps that I had from another project that I did. Now these are already two and a quarter inches which is what I like for the bookmarks and then the length that I like for the bookmarks is seven inches. So I'm just gonna use this trimmer and create the size that I want. Okay, and now I'm going to corner the edges using this, this it's called an envelope uh, punch board, and I use it to make envelopes for my cards. So the back side of this punch board rounds off the corners. Um, now I'm not going to tape it down if you want to do that and if you want to prevent them from curling up like this you can see it's not completely flat then you can do that I prefer not to just because I I don't want to take the time to do it for each one because this is a fast easy project and and really I don't think people are going to care if the paper is a little wonky <laughs> so I'm not going to worry about it this is a, a project that I just feel is fun and quick and easy and a really fun gift to give to people. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of water on it. Now I don't want to cover the whole thing. You can if you want to, if you like that look. I just want it kind of random. Um, I want different colors and I want it to drip and I just, I just want it to be a really fun, easy background, really loose and simple. So I'm just randomly putting water on there just so that it it blends really nicely when I put the colors on. And I'm just going to pick a couple of colors. One of the, my favorite colors is um, Opera Rose, I believe it's called. It's a very um, pretty hot pink color. So I'm just going to pop that in just randomly. Just going to make some splotches and just move it around and just be very random with it. With these bookmarks, you don't have to worry about the composition of it really. Just do it and enjoy it 
and don't worry about it. They're just scraps of paper. If you mess up and you don't like something, you don't have to worry about it really. That's my, my feeling about it. And when I'm relaxed and doing it and not worrying about being perfect with it, I feel like I do better. I do a better job of it. So I'm gonna also use this um, New Gamboge Yellow. And usually yellow and pink don't work that great together, but in this small context and with uh, the variety of color that I want, I don't I don't mind that they're complementary colors. I'm just gonna splash that on and let it do its thing. And it took me a few times before I really felt like I was getting the result that I wanted. You don't wanna make it really dark, I will say that. If you make it too dark, it won't look as good when you add your flower on top of it. But at the same time, I don't want it too light either. So I might go back and add maybe just a little bit of, of darker color in here, just here and there, just because I want it to have some contrast and, and look really good. I think I'm going to add another color. This is kind of an experimental time as well. You know, just go for it. Wipe some out. Wipe off your brush and pull some up if you want. Pull up the spots you feel like you're going to take a long time to dry if you want. Okay, I'm just going to leave that like that. Actually, I think I want it to drip as well. I'm going to put a little bit of water and tilt it and let it drip. And that's kind of cool. Kind of grabbed all the colors as it was going down. All right, I'm going to set that one aside. And let's do something completely different. I'm gonna go with the green. And a little blue. And again, just wanna say, I wouldn't paint anything else this way. <laughs> this is just for a fun background. I'm not I'm not going by rules that I would normally go by when I do watercolor painting as far as colors and and how I'm putting it on and I'm just I'm just throwing it on actually and just seeing what happens because this is a time to experiment, a time to to see what happens when you put things together and and it's, I count it as a learning experience as well as, as making making something fun and pretty to give to to friends. I'm gonna add just a little more. I'm gonna wipe off my my brush, get some of the water out, and add some darker bits here and there. Now the shape of, of what I did with these two is very similar. I don't want to do that same shape this time. I want to do something else. So I'm gonna use, use some turquoise. That's always fun. Turquoise and maybe some purple. Those two colors are really great together. All right, but instead of uh, getting the whole thing wet like I did, I'm just going to put some random color here and there. All right, let's go for some purple. can do all kinds of crazy things with your paper since it's so small. <laughs> I 
I'm not putting a lot of thought in this at all. I'm just throwing it on and seeing what happens. And I, I advise you to do that too. Sometimes we got to just have fun and, and not putting pressure on ourselves to, to make it look a certain way. Let's just, let's just do something random and just see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. So there's a couple of backgrounds that I can use. I also have some others that are already dry and I think I'm gonna go ahead and use those so that I can show you how, how I draw. And here's some that I did, just some random colors, random backgrounds. And on their own, they don't look awesome. But when you put the flowers on top, it makes the background even come alive. Now when I did this one, I didn't like the background at all. But once I added the flower and the background shines through, I think it looks awesome. I really love this bookmark. So I'm going to draw on some of these and let, let these dry on their own. Um, I'm going to do one of my favorites and the easiest, and it's this one. First of all, you're not going to draw a, um, a perfect circle like you did when you drew flowers as a kid. This kind of a, of a, a motion, but kind of in a circle as well. I'm going to do that for the center. And then I start doing the petals. And again, I do them randomly. The ends of them sometimes will look like this. Sometimes they'll be round, sometimes they'll be pointy, uh, sometimes they'll have a dip in them like that. Every time I do one, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm not going to do them all the same. But I do want them pretty much the same length all the way around. Um, they don't have to be. This one is a little shorter than this one. But you don't want them too, too varied as far as length but a little bit varied. Okay, um, now I'm going to add petals in the back. Okay, so now I have my very varied <laughs> looking petals and um, now what I want to do is just add the shadow on the inside and what I want to do is not draw straight lines like this I want to do varied and I'm gonna flick instead of pressing down and keeping the same pressure and then lifting up I'm going to press down and then as I'm drawing the line, I'm going to lift my pen and flick like that. And I'm going to be random. Um, I don't want to cross over like that, but I want to not do straight like that. Okay. I'm not going to do it them too long. I'm thinking about the petals of a flower and and how deep the petals may go and uh, some may not be as much in shadow as as the one next to it it just depends on how much light it's getting and if you're looking at a reference you can get more of a feel and how much shadow that you want to put um, towards the center of the petals, the center of the flower. Okay, now I don't want to forget about the flowers that are in the back. If you can see any of it, then I, what I do is I just darken it in the middle, not all the way up, but just 
darken it a little bit because when petals are overlapping there's there's gonna be some shadow in there all right and now I'm going to put the hash marks doing the same thing as the middle at the tips of, of each petal now some of them will be varied so these that these petals that are shaped like this I'm gonna do a little bit longer hash marks and then some shorter ones just to give it some some form and then the the ones that are pointy I may only do one or two I don't want to do a lot on those that's just how I do it Now I've gotten all of the hash marks that I want. Now I'm gonna just maybe darken a couple of them, not all of them. Because some of the petals may be bending more than others. So just wanna put some, a variety of darkness on my hash marks for this flower. Also, these Gerber daisies sometimes have a wave to them, so I'm going to put on some of them just some marks to make it appear as if the, the petal isn't smooth but has a little bit of a bumpy wave to it. I'm going to add my stem. I like having the stem. I'm going to put a little notch maybe where I want to put a leaf like this one. Not even sure what Gerber Daisy um, leaves look like if you want to be you know super precise with it and make it exactly like a Gerber daisy or whatever kind of daisy this is um, then you can look at a reference and and do that now right underneath where the flower itself is the stem is going to be dark because it will be blocked the sun will be blocked and I'm just going to do just a little bit of, of a shadow on one side of the stem. Okay. I'm going to sign it because it's a piece of original artwork. And now this one hasn't been... The corners haven't been punched, so I'm going to do that. And I'll finish this one off. You can guess the center. If you really want to make sure it's in the center, you can measure it. Um, so these are two and a quarter, so it'll be one and, and an eighth. I'm going to just eyeball it. And put on clear reinforcement on both sides just so I want it to be super reinforced not even sure you can see it <laughs> okay and okay now I'm, I'm going to use this actually I like this one better this light pink colored uh, double twisted thread or cording I think they call it maybe cording and you fold it in half and pass the fold through the hole and then open up that loop on the front and pull the two ends through 
and it holds just fine for these bookmarks. You don't have to glue it or, or anything like that. And uh, what I do is um, I either tie a knot on each end because they this this stuff does fray really easily and separate. Um, you can do it that way. And let the two ends just kind of be the be the ribbon for you. Cut that excess off. I need better scissors. <laughs> I didn't show you how I use the white the one I just did. With the white I might just give a little bit of highlight on the side where the sun would be hitting it the most. Now it's not going to show up where there's not any color so you know just do it randomly. You don't have to, to do the whole thing but just a little bit of it can really brighten it up and and give it I don't know just an extra something. Uh, jelly roll doesn't show up as well as this broad um, uniball signal. You're just putting a little bit here and there. You're not going to overwhelm it um, and give too much because you don't want to go overboard. But just a little bit makes it really cute. So I really love these. I hope that you try it. It it's really good for your just developing your drawing skills and your observation skills like when you're looking at flowers and it's it's fun to do it without worrying about having to produce masterpiece or something you're just doing something fun and again if you want to see how I made the ones with alcohol ink I'll show you some of those again if you want to try these and if you have some alcohol ink and some non-porous paper sitting around and you want to try it these are really really pretty and colorful and they're fun to do as well enjoy making these beautiful bookmarks <laughs>